Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, if you're used to the channel, we're doing something a little bit different. It's going to be more of a live demonstration and sorry if my voice sounds a little bit off. I am still recovering from my sickness, but the videos must go on. So today we're going to cover four different topics. One's going to be opening files. The other one's going to be starting applications and opening folders. Last will be creating an application to kind of do it for you. So let's start with the first example. We're going to be using import OS and self process because they both do the same thing, but they do have a difference in certain situations. So looking at our first example here, you'll see that we have the OS start file and notepad.exe. If we go ahead and uncomment that there. Now, both subprocess.popen and os.startfile file will both open notepad.exe. This is an executable where you don't need to be in the same directory. There are executables and applications where you need to be in the same directory. This is not one of them. So if we run this here, you'll see that our notepad opens just fine. And same for subprocess. If we run that, notepad opens just fine. So if you need to open something like notepad or one of those type of applications, I don't have the full list, sorry for that one, but certain applications like that don't need to be in the same directory. But start file and p open for the subprocess, they do the same thing. Now let's take a look at the second example here. We have opening a specific application, like let's say Blender. If I want to call it like I did for the notepad, you'll see that I'm going to get a, it cannot find the file because we need to be in that same directory. So running this like we did before is not going to work. That's why on the second line here, we have a different version of it using an R string here. If we call the full path of the application where the exe is located, you'll see that it'll open just fine. It's going to open on my second monitor here, pull that over. So you can see that my application did open. There's no issues. Keep in mind that you actually can change your directory. This is giving this full directory. We can do a comma here and then say CWD. And if we just copy, well, not the full thing. If we copy just the, yeah, just this part here and paste that. And we paste it as an R string here. Of course, we're going to go over the line limit. It's going to do the exact same thing. If we run it again, it's going to open on the second monitor once again. And you'll see that nothing's changed. The only thing that happened on the back end is that we changed directories when we opened the file. So doing it that way allows you to actually switch into the directory. Now you might be asking, well, can I just get rid of the blender.exe? Well, we can give that a try here. We can say, well, if we're just changing directories, it should be able to find it. And it doesn't work. You still have to specify the directory. For this example, you don't need CWD. At the very end of this video, I do have an example where you do need to use a CWD which is why um, we're going to do something different here. So let's look at our third. And this is going to be opening a folder. I wanted to show that you can use two different methods. So you can just open your, let's say I wanted to open my music folder with start file. You see that I specified the full from the CPATH, my users, the username, and then the actual folder here. And you see that my music opens there's no issues and you can do this as well using double slashes personal preference at that point but if you wanted to use um, double slashes you could now if you're wondering how to find your directories for like let's say music folders and stuff like that because it's a little bit tricky you would think the first thing you can do is if i pull up my music folder here is that you could just click on music and you could just copy this up here, but this is only going to give you music because it's like a shortcut to actually find your music folder. You do need to go over and this is Windows. I don't have an example for Mac because I don't really use Mac that often and in Linux I only really use for capture the flag challenges. So I'm not that savvy on either. So at least for Windows, if you go over to your PC and then you go over to your local disk, you're going to go to your users. You're going to find your username and then you're just going to look for the folder, which is going to be music. And here now we have the full list, the full directory. And that's where you would just paste your full directory in there. Either use an R string or double backslashes. And I did just want to have for, you know, demonstration purposes that you can use a process. It does the same exact thing. Oh no, we have a problem. We have a whenever your access is denied. Now for this one specifically, for a full explanation of why it's happening, I cannot tell you. I've actually tried running this from the command prompt with uh, administration privileges. I still got the same thing. I tried running it in the terminal course just for curiosity. And no matter where I ran it, I always got the win five. So I am not specifically sure if it's because I'm opening a folder. I'm not sure if he opens only restricted to opening files or there's a different process that you need to run to open a folder. For those that are really savvy with this and you know it's a process like that, definitely leave in the comment section below why you get the access is denied. If you run it with double backslashes, you get the same exact thing. Your access is denied. 
So I showed you applications just so you know it does work with files. If we go back over to the music, you see that I have a text file here, the coding secret formula. If you're working in PyCharm specifically, I don't know if this works with VS Code. I don't use it too often, but it does allow you to autocomplete these. And I, I don't mean just the folder. We can go back and actually try to find music. It shows us that we can just tab into our music. Then we could find our coding secret formula. Okay. So if we run this now, you'll see that our coding secret formula is up. We have documentation, repetition, and stack overflow. You could always test this with popen to make sure it works with that or if it doesn't work. Lastly, this is the reason of why an application was needed. So just a quick backstory, I am a very lazy programmer. When I say lazy programmer, when I made my first two YouTube videos, by the second video, I realized I don't want to actually type, nor do I want to actually have to record my videos. So I built two applications. I built an auto typer and I built an auto recorder. And I put those two together to where while it's typing, it'll record on OBS. When it's not typing, it's going to pause and then it continues recording after it starts typing again. And the reason I did that is because when I edit my videos, I make fast paced videos. But when I was doing that, I ran into an issue and this is what I wanted to bring up today. If we try to run start file, as we saw before, as long as you have the full path as an R string, it usually runs just fine, no issues. But if you try it with OBS, you end up getting an OBS error. It can't find in any file. And just to verify it wasn't just start file, I did try self process as well. It lets you know that this issue is specifically with OBS. Now, what it stated was that you do need to be in the same folder as a workaround. That's as much as I could get from it. I don't know specifically why you need to, but you do need to be in the same directory. And just with that, I developed a best practice is probably just to be in the same directory as an application whenever you're trying to open an application. Now, from the previous example, um, this one here, we could just put put CWD and then work from there and it'll work just fine. And let's go ahead and do that now. We can go ahead and put CWD here and we'll just get rid of this part of it and have that. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I'm running OBS, uh, but you see that it, it worked and it, it, it sees that uh, OBS is already up. Let's get into the final part of this video. I hope it hasn't been going on too long. I'm gonna try my best to trim it down as best as I can because I do like to make my videos fast, but this is the first actual application video. For this part of the video, we're going to build a OBS opener in a sense. It's going to open OBS, but it's going to be generic to where you can use it for any file as long as you know how to get to your file location. So I'll put it on screen how to find a file location if you don't know where it's at, but you at least know how to find the actual application in the search bar. So if I search Blender, right, what you would do here is you would find your file, you would right click open file location. More than likely, it's going to show you a shortcut. You would click on your shortcut, right click again, open file location. And that will always take you to your file location, which would be right about here where I have my blender. Now, this doesn't give you the full name. If you need the file path, it's always at the top. If you want to see the file name, you can always go to your properties, go into details. And down here, your original file name, blender.exe is what you would use. Okay. So with that all out the way, we're going to go ahead and kind of, we're going to pick up the pace for this video and switch off into what we normally do for these videos to make them quite fast paced. Actually, one more thing before we really start the quickness of the video, I do want to make sure that you got the import correct. So we're going to import PSUtil. Now, this is going to be for getting our active processes. If you don't already have it installed and you're on um, and you're on PyCharm, you can always right click, show contents, install from here. If not, just go through your terminal and just do a pip install PSUtil. And once it's installed, you're good to go. So let's first define a function name open app. It's going to take a parameter of app name of type string and a folder path is going to be a default of none. I always try to make it a note to define your return type. And for ours, we're going to return none because we don't return any variables. Next, we'll loop through our active processes using a list comprehension, checking if the argument passed to our parameter app name is inside of our processes. Now, if you look on screen, you'll see that we have our PID, our name, our status and when it started as our variables. If we continue over to if app name in process dot name, we're looking for that specific dot name variable. Finally, if it is, then we'll pass it through at the very far left process dot name. If our app name doesn't match any process, then it'll return an empty list. Now we'll use if not to check if the list is empty. If the list is empty, that means that the app is not running. So let's go ahead and print out starting the app for debug purposes along with the app name. Then we need to get the current directory. So we'll use os.cwd for our Python's application directory. Now, because the folder can be empty, we do need to check if the folder path is none. 
If it's not none, then we do want to switch over by using os.change directory chdir into the folder path. When we're in the correct folder, we do need to verify that the path or the file actually exists in that folder. So we'll use os.path exists along with an f string, including the app name. We'll tag .exe in the f string so we don't actually have to include it when we're passing it as an argument. If the file does exist, let's go ahead and open it using subprocess.popen, including the app name. If it does not exist, we'll just go ahead and do an else statement and print out the file does not exist. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and wrap it up by switching back to our Python application's current directory, and we're finished with this part. Now to actually run it, we'll go to our main, and we'll pass to the function app name obs64, and for the folder path where it actually exists. But because I'm already running obs for this video, it's not going to do anything, so let's go ahead and make another else to at least print out that it's already open, and if we run it, it does say already open. To at least get you an example of something that does work, we'll switch it over to Blender and we'll run it, and you see that it does say starting at Blender, and Blender did open on my second monitor. Sorry the video actually did go over 10 minutes, I was trying to keep it under 10, but I did want to get as much detail as possible. If there was anything that you saw that I did wrong or something that you could have done better, definitely leave it down there in the comment section below to help out the community. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.